Okay. Well, welcome back. Let's continue on. <clears throat> Taking your songbook to number 100. Uh, this is just to sing to all ye faithful. Oh, come, all ye faithful. And of course, uh, when you get into uh, the songs of the Lord's birth, uh, the important thing, we don't have a date on it. We just, uh, year round, you should remember the Lord came to seek and to save that which was lost. And so that's the reason he was incarnate became man, God became man, uh, for the purpose of redeeming lost mankind. <clears throat> okay, let's, okay, now maybe, now, yeah, that's better, okay. <clears throat> so number 100. And we can sing the chorus with all three stanzas. Okay. <clears throat> oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, come ye, O come to him as your Lord and Savior. God become flesh, now in flesh appearing. And yes, that did happen, and it is still good to this day, his redemption plan. Amen. So anyone, whosoever will, may come and be saved. Number 180. 180. Lord God, our thanks to thee we raise for those who built this house of praise. Uh, we did get a picture this week of uh, an update of Jimmy Park and Brad, his son, and that'll be out and be circulating with some of you. Okay, they're in fair condition, still moving along. Number 180.
Emmanuel, God with us. What a wonderful thing that we have. You know, there's some things in, in that song that you might wonder about. Uh, here we shared the wine, the bread. And you know, in the Bible, wine says it's the fruit of the vine. Okay, so don't get confused. We're not talking about alcoholic stuff. We're talking about the fruit of the vine. It's found in the cluster. Okay, and so, uh, and, and then uh, we need to uh, let the Lord be our guide and keep us from enmity and pride. You know, that's one of the biggest destruction of in the world is their own pride thinking they're something. And if we just need to stay away from that and take the better part, a humble and a thankful heart. It's that time of year where we need to have thankful hearts. And that's the year round, 365 days we need to have thankful hearts. And yet you don't even hear about the national holiday hardly at all, uh, about Thanksgiving. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, be thankful always. We looked at some of those verses last hour on being thankful to God Almighty. That's who you're thankful to, is to God. You thank him for what people do for, for you because he allows them, leads them to do that. Number 190. We'll be looking at the dedication prayer of Solomon here in a few minutes. A temple dedication. We bless the name of Christ the Lord. We bless the name of Christ the Lord. We bless him for his holy. the Lord. We're going to see in uh, here in 1 Kings as we look on shortly we'll be seeing in the dedication service how they bless the Lord. Uh, we ought to be blessing the Lord for who he is. Okay. He blesses us richly uh, because of his mercy and his long suffering to us and all uh, and for faith in his son Jesus Christ. And so he blesses us. We need to bless him also. And it's, it talks about here in, uh, also about the baptism, okay? Uh, it's uh, when you uh, prove your obedience that you feel you know you're saved and you have Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you want to be baptized. In fact, we, uh, Debbie wants to be baptized. She got saved after she started coming to this church here, and she then fell ill 
before we were able to baptize her. And so she still wants to be saved as far as uh, be baptized. She's been saved. Uh, baptism is after you know you're saved. And then it's to, uh, with conscience free, once you've done what you know the next step is after you're saved and being baptized, then your conscience is free. And so you are set uh, to just serve the Lord and get in baptism, in love and peace. Uh, notice, uh, with conscience free, we rest, rest in God. That's after you're baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, with conscience free. It sets your con conscience free. We've done whole messages on that. Uh, we probably ought to teach on it again someday uh, soon. But in love and peace through Jesus' blood. Not through the water. <laughs> through Jesus' blood. That's where you get uh, saved. And uh, so then the baptism is what God tells us to do. And so then we can cry, Abba, Father. Ah, how wonderful it is. Uh, come to the Father. And, Abba, Father. Yes, sir. So then the comforter's there with us, guiding us and long in the way and all that. How wonderful it is. Look at uh, number 188 there. I love thy kingdom, Lord. <clears throat> the house of thine abode. The church church that God created in Matthew. Hey. songs ago there we have one stanza in that one song that we probably should just ignore it's the one about here have our children prayed and praised and all and uh, we've been here you know long ago since our children were gone and, and most of you didn't have your children here in this church uh, I don't know if anybody else did so uh, but that song is still in there with that stanza and we need to sing with understanding and realize, well, that's, that's not going to apply to me. <laughs> so there are some things like that in the Bible. In the songbook, I should say. It all applies to us in the Bible. Okay, let's take our Bibles now and turn to 1 Kings 8. 1 Kings 8. We're going to be looking at dedication here. Dedication of the temple. And uh, just to start there, we'll read the the beginning of the chapter, and then we'll maybe look at this more again later, but uh, 1 Kings chapter 8, 1 Kings chapter 8, then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast in the month Ethanim, 
which is the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, the priests took up the ark, they brought up the ark of the Lord, the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, even those did the priests and Levites bring up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him went with him before the ark, uh, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be told for numbers for multitude. And the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto his place into the oracle of the house to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. Uh, so we remember that from the destruction of the, on the oracle and the holy of holies and the cherubims that were placed in there. Verse 7, for the cherubims spread forth their two wings over the place of the ark and the cherubims covered the ark and the stays there of above. And they drew out the staves, that the ends of the staves were seen out of the holy place before the oracle, and they were not seen without, and they, uh, there they are unto this day. Remember the, the, what they carried the ark by was the uh, a problem in David's day when the uh, Philistines brought the ark back and sent it on a cart to him, and they tried to bring it in, and David had all these problems with it, and uh, so it didn't get in where it's supposed to be for a long time. Uh, <clears throat> because they were supposed to carry it on the stage. Verse 9, there was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone which Moses put there at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand and minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. So God came down to visit them now at this dedication service. The uh, uh, temple had been completed, and now they had, were or, uh, ordaining it for use. They were dedicating it uh, to God. Now there were a lot of dedications in the Bible and I use a lot of the dedication ceremonies that we see uh, during, uh, just for thankfulness. Anytime you want to talk about Thanksgiving and the feasts that Israel had, just look at some of the dedication services that they had. And you'll see how wonderful it is. Um, we had the dedication of the tabernacle in Numbers chapter 7. And that was the forerunner to the temple. And they used a lot of the same uh, things in that that they put into the temple, the permanent temple. The tabernacle was movable, the permanent temple wasn't. And then we have uh, Solomon's temple that we're going to be looking at more here now, and that's also in 2 Chronicles 7 where you can look at that and see more about it. We had Ezra's temple. Uh, there are a lot of temples, there are five temples listed in the Bible. Uh, Ezra's temple was the one in, uh, that's told about in the book of Ezra. And we see that uh, there they had a great celebration at the dedication for that. We're not going to be looking at all, all these separate ones. I just want to make them known that dedications are common. Uh, I can remember dedications when I was a child. And we went to dedications several times, I remember, where they built Christian schools and we went to the dedication of the building of the school for God's work to be done there. And it was a, always a great time of, of feasting and gathering of uh, all the uh, believers and, and glorifying God, giving him the praise that they could do this and they could have this place to, pro chain, to train children outside of the world's influence. Uh, <clears throat> Hezekiah, he's a big one in uh, Second Chronicles and uh, First Kings. And so uh, he, he has one of the most famous ones that you hear about because they weren't all ready even to serve and to do that yet, and yet God forgave them because their hearts were right with him. And so you need to have your heart right in all that you do and let God have the glory. Uh, Jerusalem, the dedication of the wall, Jerusalem, when Nehemiah finished that, and you can look at, in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 12, especially on that, how the de great dedication ceremony they had. Uh, Samuel was dedicated by Hannah, his mother, uh, to the Lord in 1 Samuel. 
as well as uh, in Deuteronomy 20, we have the dedication of houses and property and things that you would have uh, dedicated to the Lord. And so there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's also, uh, the Lord talks about in John 10, the feast of the renewing, which is a dedication there of cleansing of the temple. It's a remembrance of when the temple had been uh, desecrated. Uh, and so on the uh, renewing there, they, they cleansed the temple. That was in uh, BC 164, uh, when the temple had been desecrated and to bring it back into service, they rededicated it. Uh, so we have all these things in the Bible. Now, what I want to look at today, especially, is the prayer that David, or excuse me, that Solomon, we moved on to the next phase, not David anymore, Solomon, uh, Solomon here prayed a prayer uh, to the Lord and in the Lord's presence now. Remember what we just finished reading there in verse uh, 10 and 11, the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, verse 11. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Then spake Solomon. Is this a time to speak? Yeah, he speaks to Right there in the Lord's presence while he's there with him. Uh, this is uh, orally he 